Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Throughout history, ship propulsion has been a testament to mankind's insatiable desire to explore and conquer the seas. With the advent of the Age of Sail, wind power became the primary means of propulsion. propelling majestic tall ships across vast oceans. The discovery of the steam engine in the 19th century sparked a maritime revolution, enabling ships to defy wind and tide. The 20th century saw the rise of diesel engines and gas turbines, increasing speed and range. The concept of using rotating blades to propel ships can be traced back to the visionary ideas of Leonardo da Vinci. However, it was the pioneering work of Robert Wilson and John Erickson in the 19th century that truly catapulted propeller design forward. Today, ship propellers are typically made from durable materials such as bronze or stainless steel. Advanced computational fluid dynamics and hydrodynamics are utilized for optimal performance and fuel efficiency. Propellers work by converting rotational power into thrust, propelling ships forward. The process of propeller blade manufacturing involves several stages to ensure precision and performance. It begins with pattern manufacturing, creating an EPS template based on the desired blade shape. This pattern is then used in the molding stage, where a sand mold is formed around the pattern. Once the mold is ready, the casting process takes place, with molten metal being poured into the mold. After solidification, the mold is broken to reveal the rough casting. The casting then undergoes machining, removing excess material. Followed by grinding and polishing for a smooth finish. Finally, a critical blue fit test is conducted to ensure precise blade alignment and fit within the propeller hub. The propellers are now ready for assembly. Some companies started using 3D printing as a fast and efficient technique for manufacturing these propellers. Parallelly, the propulsion unit is being assembled. This process involves several steps. One such example is the assembly of the azimuth propulsion unit. The process begins with the shrink fitting of the stator, where the stator is precisely positioned and thermally expanded to fit onto the pod housing. Outfitting follows where various components and systems are installed within the pod. Once completed, the team connects the motor and propeller shafts together to form the shaft line. This is followed by the thrust bearing assembly, which supports the axial loads generated during operation. Once these components are in place, the rotor is installed onto the shaft, completing the propulsion unit.
A comprehensive test is then conducted to ensure the azimuth's performance and functionality. Once tested and approved, the unit is carefully transported to the shipyard for fitting to the ship. Propellers are then installed in the propulsion unit. During her lifetime, a ship is periodically dry docked to undergo maintenance and upgrades. The propulsion system is one crucial area that often receives attention. Upgrades to the ship's propulsion system involve modernizing or enhancing its performance to improve efficiency, maneuverability, and adherence to environmental regulations. The process typically includes removing the existing propulsion components such as engines, shafts, and propellers, and replacing them with modern and more efficient alternatives. With energy saving being a top priority, ship owners started the integration of eco-friendly devices, such as energy saving devices, onto the ship propeller. A notable example is the retrofit installation of Becker Muestuck Twisted to the Hamburg Sud 7100 TEU container vessel Santa Rita in Rotterdam. The Becker Muis duct is a unique and innovative device designed to optimize the flow of water around the vessel's propeller. Thereby reducing energy consumption and improving fuel efficiency. During the retrofit process, the Becker Muis duct twisted was precisely fitted to the Santa Rita's hull using 3D scanning, integrating seamlessly with its propulsion system. Next, preparations were made for fin adjustment, tailoring the fins to match the vessel's specifications. Once the adjustments were completed, the team carefully positioned the device around the propeller, followed by welding to secure them firmly in place. To ensure the integrity of the retrofit, magnetic and electrodynamic testing were conducted. These tests verified the strength of the welds and the compatibility of the Becker Muis duct twisted with the vessel's propulsion system. This installation allowed for better flow dynamics and decreased turbulence around the propeller, resulting in 3% of energy savings. While 3% may appear modest on a large container vessel, this translates into significant fuel consumption reduction and a corresponding decrease in greenhouse gas emissions. Another example of ship propulsion system upgrades is the replacement of rudders. For instance, the Becker Marine Systems Amera project constitutes a remarkable rudders upgrade project. Within only six months, Becker Marine Systems could bring back to the oceans the 30 years old cruise ship. The vessel required extensive modifications and upgrades, including installing a flap rudder. The process of rudder replacement involved several technical steps. Initially, 
The existing rudders were carefully removed from the ship's stern. Taking into account structural considerations and ensuring safe detachment. Next, a detailed engineering analysis was conducted to design and fabricate new rudders that meet the specific requirements of the vessel. Then, skilled technicians proceeded with the installation process. This involves precise alignment and fitting of the rudder shaft, ensuring optimal connection to the steering gear system. After six months, the newly named MS Amera was ready for her maiden voyage. The enhanced maneuverability and efficiency offered by the new rudders contributed to a smoother, more enjoyable cruising experience for passengers. Due to the constant waves and corrosive environment, Ships and their various systems require regular maintenance. Depending on the nature of the repair or refurbishment, this can either be done while the ship is at sea or within a dry dock. Dry docks are man-made channels connected to waterways like lakes, rivers, and oceans. They are gated, allowing boats to enter and have the channel sealed off behind them. Once sealed, powerful pumps can be used to drain the water out of the channel. This leaves the boat sitting atop a series of support blocks and gives repair and cleaning crews full access to the ship's full engines. A ship equipped with azimuth thrusters can have each one removed, taken apart, and refurbished while it remains safely in a dry dock. Once the thrusters and their various components have been returned to pristine condition, they can be reassembled and reinstalled. If the crew is able to avoid any direct damage, these thrusters will last several years before another maintenance cycle is required. These engineers are performing refurbishment on a main propulsion crankshaft for a massive container vessel. This ultra-complex piece of equipment must be carefully inspected, disassembled, and repaired in order to ensure the client's satisfaction. The crankshaft is the part of the engine that converts the reciprocating motion into a rotational motion. Without it, the ship's propeller would be unable to turn and generate thrust. Though crankshafts are designed with extremely high fatigue strength and wear resistance, they require regular maintenance to prevent failure. This particular model weighs dozens of tons and can take hours to disassemble properly. Fortunately, the ship maintenance crews have access to powerful lifts and other machinery that can help streamline the process. Even after a ship's engines have been properly installed, they still need to be aligned to ensure maximum efficiency. When propellers are not putting effort in the same direction, it can lead to issues with maneuverability and speed.
Both of these can drastically affect fuel consumption and put unnecessary strain on the engine as it attempts to perform at the same level. By continuously improving propulsion systems and implementing regular maintenance practices, the shipping industry can achieve higher operational efficiency, reduce environmental impact, and ensure the longevity and safety of vessels in the ever-evolving maritime landscape. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.